now, brother, I need your, you've been right up in the mix. You've been in the industry as an active mm-hmm. participant, okay, world tours, you know, a, a million hours a day in the studio, the whole nine. Right. Okay, so now you're talking from the inside, not someone, you know, from the outside. So in his book, from the book Behold the Pale Horse, written by William Cooper, a former naval intelligence officer, in regards to a document concerning the American public, it states, diversion is the primary strategy. The simplest method for securing silent weapons and gaining it is to keep the public, is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of basic system principles while keeping them confused. And this is what these reality shows are doing. Confused about gender, confused about political, confused, confused about um, your role. You understand what I'm saying? Confused about religion, confused about politics. It says keep them confused, disorganized, and distracted with matters of no real importance. Whereas the media, M-E-D-I-A, which stands for multi-ethnic destruction in America, or maniac European devils in action, keeps the adult population's attention diverted from real social issues and captivated by no matters of no real importance. It goes on to say, the schools are kept, keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law, and real history. Entertainment is kept below the sixth grade level. When you start hearing songs like Laffy Taffy and these kind of songs, would hit your lower chakras and vibrate that negative energy. Activating your pituitary gland, releasing those hormones. Now you got grown ass men making songs for twelve and thirteen year olds. Teach, bro. I I E J Z. You understand what I'm saying? So the public is kept busy working, and the result is no time to think. And that's exactly what they produced. And they wrote about it inside of a book called the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations. Shaping the Moral, Spiritual, Cultural, Political, and Economic Decline of the United States by John Coleman. Now, John Coleman is the gentleman that wrote the Committee 300. And the Committee 300 is that organ that decide what the trends are going to be in the black community. So when you start seeing people wearing mohawks and tight pants and acting, wearing two earrings and acting like women, that was manufactured and put among us. Teach, brother. Teach, brother. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to understand that. How they did it, they put, they said they devised a system, and the aim of the 12 atonal system that they devised jointly by British intelligent operatives from Tavistock University or Tavistock Institute in England. They put these 12 tones among us, all right, and created this thing, um, punk rock and this other uncontrollable music. Look up uh, Operation Paperclip and it'll tell you all about it, but Ardorno was a system of music that could program the mass music culture capable of eroding the morals of its listeners until they declined to a point where they would totally be degraded by it. And that's what's going on today. The music is bringing us down to an animalistic level, to the point where we don't even care about the art form. We just want a paycheck. Yes, sir. So now it's cool for a Jim Jones to come out talking about na 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 and grown folks go for it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, it's cool right. for the, these cats to come out with songs talking about, I'm stupid, you stupid, we stupid. Why does that appeal to grown men and grown women? Joe, Joe Bacan uh, put out a DVD called The Corporation. He said, to children, as tomorrow's consumers, represent a huge market today, and therefore a fair game. You understand what I'm saying? So they are attacking the children using tones and frequencies. Mm. And parents want to see their children happy. We go out and use our credit cards and our hard-earned dollars to make sure our children are happy. So we get the sneakers and the new sneakers and the new video games and the new songs that come out and this kind of thing. Thinking that we're making our children happy. We're feeding our children's minds and souls to the wolves. Now, I'm not particularly cool with some of these brothers' lifestyle, but nonetheless, they're my brothers. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We have to look at Damon Dash. We have to look at Suge Knight. We have to look at Irv Gotti. And we have to look at Jay Prince. These four gentlemen that got together and was going to put up $30 million apiece to get in and create their own distribution company to distribute black music. 
These people got together and said, we'll never let it happen. We'll let it, it'll happen over our dead bodies. All in one week, I'm telling you the short version of the story. All in one week, they raided the offices of these four brothers. I'm going to say them again. Damon Dash, Suge Knight, Irv Gotti, and Jay Prince out of Texas. They raided, the FBI raided their offices and confiscated their records and started piecing together um, cases against these brothers. And Suge Knight, you already know, you already know his story. Yeah. You understand? We went through some court cases. Ends up having a white Jewish woman, the owner now, of uh, everything that Death Row had put out. And I think she bought it for $22 million. No, $25 million. Ain't that something? $25. She owns the entire catalog. I'm going to have to get this woman's name so I can put it in my records. Irv Gotti, him and his brother, was brought up on charges, remember? Oh, yeah. Several years ago. And his, his thing was publicized because they raided his offices. And try to connect them to some mob ties and some drug dealing and that kind of thing. Thanks to your man, 50 Cent. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then, uh, rap a lot, J, rap a lot owner Jay Prince, who they connected to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, embezzling money and fraud and, uh, laundering money, this kind of thing. But Jay Z, it, uh, was privy to this information and Jay Z was one of the ones that took it back to them. So what did they do? They bought Jay-Z off to tell the short version of the story. And each one of these individuals had to make a blood sacrifice. So let's take a closer look at this. Who did, uh, who did Damon Dash sacrifice? He sacrificed his fiance. Who was he engaged to at the time? Aaliyah. Who died in a plane crash. Who did Suge Knight sacrifice? Tupac. Who Irv Gotti was supposed to sacrifice, but it didn't happen? Ashanti. She broke away from the camp, and now she's doing well. But that was his blood sacrifice. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Teach. So rap a lot Jay Prince was uh, heard through the African grapevine that he had inked a deal with uh, the brother uh, Pimp C. And as if you can remember, Pimp C went live before he died. And he started blasting people, calling people homosexuals and this kind of thing, and he was calling people out. Shortly after that, they found him dead in a hotel. Overdose. Mm. 